this is my computer area. At first glance, it seems rather on the unusual side because first it's really low to the ground. Case in point, here's a typical ruler. The keyboard is barely 12 inches above the ground, which is about 30 centimeters if you want it in metric. But there's another unusual thing. You're probably wondering, uh, what is this here all about? This seems a bit odd. And this is my mouse, and right here is where my keyboard is. You can probably see a little light right there. And of course, you got my usual display, the speakers on the side that are currently turned on, but there's a null pointer to a song playing because I hit that stop button that comes in useful. And of course, I got a little hygrometer here so I can get a sense on the humidity. Yeah, it's reading about 63 right now, maybe 62. It's kind of on the boundary. So, you're probably wondering, what is this here anyway? These are dryer sheets. Uh, okay, what's the point of having dryer sheets on your keyboard? That seems really weird when you think about it. But it actually serves two reasons. First, it's a lot more comfortable to type. This, of course, is just a quick example, just to give you the idea. It's not the real way I do it. The real way is more like this. However, the other reason is it also helps keep the dust out. Except every now and then I get little holes like this right here, if you can see that. Yeah, I can reach my hand in there and pull that up, no problem. There's a hole here. And there's another really big hole right here. I can poke my finger right under it, no problem. And there's one that's just starting to form here. It's been a little longer than my usual time in which I normally swap these out. So, I'm going to be swapping them out right now. So, how do I go about getting deciding what dryer sheets to use? Do I just go over to the box and grab some more random ones out of there? No, I use used dryer sheets. Okay, why well, use used ones? Well, they've already been put to use for laundry, so I might as well recycle them and put them to more use. So, I look for specific qualities in dryer sheets. This one here, I can see, is just a little wrinkly, but it should be okay for the most part. This one here, um, yeah, this one's actually pretty straight. Got a little odd kink over there, but that's fine. This one here is slightly wrinkly, but very good. This one here is got a little kink right here, but it's not drastic enough, so I'm fine there. This one has got a really big kink right here. This one's a little too much. So this one I might use for the mouse, because that one is less specific and demanding than the ones for the keyboard. And this one also seems fine. In total, I really only need five. One, two, three, four, five. Don't forget that mouse and my mouse pad. That aside, I am going to replace these. There are screws right here, another one here, 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 and here, and there's a null pointer to one over here. Yeah, I can just simply lift that up, no problem. So, the first thing I need to do, yank these screws out. These are type 2 sheetrock screws, basically, half inch long. That one's a little loose, so I need to find a good spot to put them so that they're out of the way. Normally I would not recommend the floor, so instead I'm going to put it right there. And one thing that's also something i got to watch when I deal with these screws, it'll twist around like that, so I usually hold it like this, putting a little spreading it out a little bit, and then I work on unscrewing. It works a lot better that way. Sometimes I can do it with my own hand. Careful, that spikes. You don't want to touch them. They're nice and sharp. Yeah, I'm using my left hand instead of my right hand, just to give you another vantage point of it. 
Not all the time I need to hold it, but still I can do that to speed things up. And number five. Usually I only replace one, maybe two at a time. And that's usually this one and sometimes this one that gets it. Because they're the ones that are used most, especially this one. I can't explain why it's always the one that's over the J key that gets it, or why that hole keeps getting in there. But that aside, these, by the way, are not what they seem. They're pretty heavy. And when I mean pretty heavy, I mean they're pretty heavy. Look how much of a dent that made. That's because I got uh, a whole lot of weight in there. It's just to uh, press that down. Now that these are now clear, you can kind of start seeing the results right here. A little tiny hole in there, but it's not. this one's not too bad. This one right here, yes, they stick together pretty well. Here you can see a lot of stuff on this one. Yeah, no kidding, I need to replace these. So, toss that one. Yep, I'm replacing them all. There you can really see that big hole in there, among a few others. This one right here, well there's a little oddity right in there, but no big deal. That one's actually still in pretty decent shape. This one, on the other hand, I just toss away. This one's got the kink on it, so I just replace that, and what do you know? The mouse part is already done. As far as the keyboard part goes, this requires some careful alignment. If you notice closely here, this looks a little different in color. That's because this is painted, this is the original wood. This is where the screw holes are. So I, need, I just simply need to, nothing more than, line it up. Of course, I could just put the screw in right now, but I often like to use something that's really uh, spooky if you're not careful with them. What I do for this, is I get one point on this to carefully rip a hole in this as I'm carefully spreading it out to bring up tension. This breaks up the fibers. And then I start one screw in here. The exact alignment is not critical. This screw can go all the way in. don't have to have them in there very tight, just enough to secure it. I repeat the process over here, except I need the next one on top of this. So let's see, I'm checking the quality of this one. Okay, this has got that little odd kink over there, but let me see. And over here... Okay, it'll, have, it'll be like this, except I just noticed that there's a kink right there. So this one I'm going to just toss away, I don't need it anymore. And this one here was pretty good. So I get roughly about an inch to an inch and a half overlap, but I also have to make sure I get a coverage on the screw hole right here. In case you're wondering, I'm generating trees by the thousands right now. That's what that is going on. Grab a screw, feed it into the hole. Yeah, there's a screw hole here, and I need to put it, feed this a screw. This one I didn't even need the screwdriver for, because it's already all the way down. It's already down. Yeah, it's kind of loose, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. And then for this one, it's got a little kink there. Yep, this one should be fine. So, line this one up. Put some tension on it. Ooh, this one's really curving a lot more than I thought. Okay, so... Hmm. Might have to go grab some different ones, I guess. But this one's an excellent 
condition. Listen, I don't even have to debate on it or not. Okay, the screw holes there. Break up those fibers. And from there, put a screw into the screw hole and screw it in. Yeah, it's getting a little tension on. Okay, there's that one, and now I need one more where it isn't as critical. This shouldn't affect anything. This is going over the edge, so that won't affect anything. Of course, I could also flip it like this, and use it like this, but this curl over here means I need to point it down. This side isn't used as much, but I tend to use the numeric input pad quite a bit, especially holding the alt key and pushing four numbers in to type special characters like that degree symbol that I use frequently. That's uh, 0162. Zero, uh, oh yeah, the 162 is actually the sense symbol. 176 is the uh, degree symbol. 0215 is multiply. 0247 is divide. There's quite a few of them that I use, but if all else, there's always chartmap.exe. It comes in so handy for that. And I've got one last one to do. So, that part's now done, except there's one other thing that I really need to do. What is that? I remember these, they need to be put on here, except I need to make some minor adjustments, not too significant. I need to pull these up just a little bit so that it's a little loose, and then I put one of these heavy weights on there. It doesn't have to be an Altoids tin, it's full of pennies. Yeah, that's right, pennies, these things that I still have by the thousands. And over here I do the same. And now I'm all ready to use my keyboard and mouse, all with nice fresh dryer sheets on them. Probably wondering, okay, what about the scent? Well, I can't really smell things too well. My sense of smell is extremely weak. That aside, this video was created by Elilia. Thank you for watching. And by the way, I generated about 300 trees during all this.